Hi everyone. I hope you've en enjoyed the documentaries um, we have done recently. Um, for now it's back to the brilliancy series because um, Tim C has now gone on all day for a week so I will just be um, doing brilliancy games because um, he finds all the documentaries and puts them on. And I hope you've enjoyed all of them and found them instructive. I have as well. And um, on to the brilliancy, brilliancy series again. Um, this game is Yasser Sowan versus Anatoly Karpov, played in a tournament in London in 1982. And Sowan was white and opened with knight f3. And we soon transposed into a tactic where Queen's Gambit declined, which was the um, opening for the first game. You see, black takes back with the piece, so um, two pairs of minor pieces get swapped off because black has less space in this opening. But in return for the slight cramp, black has a queenside pawn majority and potential play down the um, half open E line, where and also rapid development uh, and black and white has some pressure on down the C line. And more space and an outpost to E5 potentially. And now he plays G3. E3 was played in uh, the Fisher game, and and now Rook E8, and now Rook C3, a strong novelty which was devised by Victor Korchnoi. The idea is to try and get the Rook to E3 and uh, neutralise Black's E line pressure. Knight A6, I have a dubious move. The idea is to play C5 and then take it back with the Knight, and even if D5 drops, Black's will have very strong compensation. And now Queen A4. And now he, he plays, Karpov actually sacks a piece and tries to hack so well up with c5. Queen e4 looks tempting here, but this rebounds to knight d2, where if black takes white's rook, then white takes black's. And if bishop d7, then queen takes d7, queen takes h1, and queen a4, and black's knight can't be protected, and the only square for it to go is b8, and that blocks the... Um, Rook's communication off, so the knight therefore will drop, and white has two pieces for a rook and pawn after black takes an h2, and they're therefore probably winning. He plays c5, which is sacking a piece for doubtful compensation, however, it is interesting. Um, white can win a piece, which so one does by rook e3. The point being is that, um Black has to play bishop e6 to block the e-line, otherwise if the queen moves then the rook goes and then the a6 knight is left on pre. However, the idea between Karpov's preparation is that white's king um, is two moves away from castling and white's queen is out of play um, after c takes d4. Black is threatening queen b4 check and if knight takes d4 then queen b4 check wins the knight. So white can't take it back and now the rook is attacked and black also has pressure down the open C line and does have some compensation for the piece. However, white plays rook b3, stopping queen any queen b4 checks. And if black plays queen c5 here, trying to get checkmate on c1, then queen d3 covers everything up and white will play bishop g2 and castle kingside and will be a knight up for a pawn. Rook C A C H trying to infiltrate down the C line leads to Knight takes D four check King D two Rook C five Knight takes Pawn takes and E three and White is a bishop up and Black can't really create many threats and White's King is fairly safe and as long as White is careful White is just a piece up. However, Karpov plays the stronger Bishop F five and this does win actually is as good as win the Rook. Because um, bishop g2. And now, if black tries a sneaky d3 threatening queen takes e2 mate, white can survive with e3. And now d4 trying to rip open more lines. Knight takes d2, d2 check, king takes, rook a d8, and rook d1. And white is a knight and pawn up, and black can't break through, so white is easy, easily winning gear. So he has to win the rook with bishop c2. And now knight takes d4, bishop takes b3, and well a takes b3 loses to um, queen b4 check, again with the same fork as earlier. So knight takes, 
Rook a c8. And now this is the move which Karpov missed in his preparation, which was bishop e f3. Well, that, that's what he said after the game. This move nullifies any pressure on the e2 point because Karpov had been open to win the e2 pawn with an equal position. And now white can just castle. And black is left with isolated, well, a, w a very weak back with a7 pawn and an isolated d5 pawn, even though black can win the pawn back. And uh, once white's king is safe, white has two pieces for a rook and pawn, is likely to win at least one pawn, and will therefore have a winning advantage. This is the refutation of this piece sack. And if and if Karpov wouldn't have played this, if he hadn't have overlooked that white's bishop can come to f3, protecting the e2 point, so white can castle without sacrificing a pawn. And now he plays rook c2, which is um, the final mistake. Queen f6, castles, and queen takes b2, we put some more resistance where black can maybe plant the rook on c2 and cause some damage. And white is, is, white is better here, but certainly not winning. But rook c2, castles, rook takes b2, and now rook d1, where white's rook and bishop are now ganging up on the uh, isolated pawn. And black's rook is hopelessly out of play, and he's a tactical vulnerability as we are going to see. Now he plays rook d8, and now knight d4, a strong move, blockading the isolated pawn, threatening knight c6, forking queen and rook, and also going after the weak a7 pawn. And also there is a lot of lines where black's rook is a tactical vulnerability. Rook takes d5 would be a nasty positional blunder, because rook takes, bishop takes and queen takes e2, and black should draw this because he has swapped his own. Um, Weak D isolate D5 pawn for a strong centre pawn. So knight D4, rook D7 getting out of the threat. Knight C6, queen E8, and now knight takes C7, a very strong piece sacrifice. If it is accepted with queen A8, rook C1, queen takes A7. Now after a long series of checks and forcing moves, Black's rook eventually gets picked off, showing the um the fact that it's a tactical liability. Check. Check. Now Queen D4 threatening the rook and mate, so forcing rook B1 check. King G2 and now F6 dealing with the only way to stop mate. Queen takes F6, rook G7, Queen F8. And now um G5 is the only move to stop Queen H8 mate. Because then the king can come to g6, and now queen f5 check, picks the rook off. And this is all forced. Rook c7 was played, and now a4. And now white just wants to um, win this b6 pawn, or the d5 pawn, and then just um, do quite a queen a pawn, something like that. So he actually lets him do the p sack, and now white's rook knifes into the game with decisive effect. After queen takes a7, check, king h7, and now another check. And now f5 is forced, loosening the pawn shield and dropping the pawn with check. g6 loses to queen d4, menacing the rook and mate. So rook b1 check, king g2, f6 is forced, queen takes, rook g7, queen f8. And now after g5, last time it actually only won a rook. But this time, now come the d5 pawn has vanished, bishop b4 check is can be played, and after rook g6 it's mate on h8, so this is even worse. So he tries f5, and after queen takes f5 check, also possible is rook a8, trapping black's queen. But queen takes f5 check is an absolutely forced win. g6, and now queen e6. Friend and queen g8 mate. Now the bishop is knifing into the game as well, and despite black's extra exchange, there is no defense here. And um, I think black's losing the queen or getting mated here. And um, this is a brilliant game, this by Sarah One. And um, he says in his book that he got um, a lot of money off um, Korshnoi for winning this game because Korshnoi hated Karpov. Well, they both hated each other, and. Um, so it gave, I think it was $500 to anyone who beat Karpov in tournament play. It was called the Exclusive $500 Club. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this instructive um, game. There won't be any, um, I don't think there's going to be any um, documentaries for a week now.
but um, you've got plenty to be working through. There's about 30 on now, and many more to come when he comes back off his holiday. And um, I hope you're enjoying them and these instructive games. Please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.